Why don't we get into some discussion about uh, some quotes and things that happened in the movie industry this week. IGN had an interesting quote from James Cameron. Now, there is a theme with quote-unquote auteurs and really celebrated directors who really shit on the MCU and DCEU. Uh, Martin Scorsese is a great example of that. He, he calls them lesser films, essentially, and is dismayed that audiences are flocking to go see those movies, which, being a fan of the MCU movies, I understand where he's coming from, but I think he's also coming to it at a point of ignorance because he, is a, as a director, too, that will praise John Ford and will praise Sergio Leone. But they made fantastic movies on popular me- on popular types of movies as well, the Westerns. And there were buttloads of Westerns back then, like from black and white to color. I think it was from like the 30s to the 50s. There were nothing but Westerns, like ass loads of Westerns. At the time, too, if, if I recall correctly from what I've read, critics said the same thing about Westerns. They were like, oh, these are just B-movie schlocky, dealing with the same things over and over again movies. And it wasn't until later when people started to realize that, oh, wow, John Ford was a fantastic director. Look what he did with The Searchers. Or look what he did with Stagecoach. Or Real Bravo. This is what happens like with popular mediums and popular media in general because they're popular the auteurs or the film snobs me being one of them i will admit the auteurs and film snobs will look down on popular stuff and say oh they must like it because it's trash or they must like it because it's just for entertainment you can't take that seriously which is really unfair which is why I'm gonna I'm gonna say this quote now. This is from James Cameron. I forget. I don't know. He was talking to the New York Times, and his quote is this: When he and IGN posted it on their feed, it says James Cameron criticizes MCU and DC character relationships. Okay, here it goes. Quote: When I look at their big spectacular films, I'm looking at you, Marvel and DC. It doesn't matter how old the characters are. They all act like they're in college. They have relationships, but they really don't. They never hang up their spurs because of their kids. The things that, that really ground uh, the really ground us and give us power, love, and a purpose, those characters don't experience it. And I think that's not the way to make movies. There's two problems with this quote. I'm going, to get to the fir- I'm going to get to the first problem, which is his criticisms. I've seen every MCU film. I've seen almost every DCEU film. The bad ones definitely have these problems. The relationships don't mean squat. They really don't. But that's the bad ones, okay? That I will give him. But he's discounting the good ones, the, the Avengers, like good relationship, like Thor Ragnarok, things like that. Like especially Natasha Romanoff, specifically that character with her relationship with Bruce Banner and her relationship with Clint Barron, with Cliff Barton, I should say, who is Hawkeye. They gave Romanoff and Barton a lot of depth in the Avengers. Yes, they were about 15, 20 minutes worth of depth. But there is a character relationship there, and it does move forward throughout the entire series. They also did it with Bruce Banner, with Bruce's obvious attraction to Natasha Romanoff, who is Black Widow. That is there. It definitely is. And if you don't even go into MCU, okay? If you want to just say, all right, well, MCU, it takes you like three, four, five films to get that, blah, 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 blah. Okay, get the criticism, fine. Let's do a comic book movie, Logan. Logan is a fantastic movie that has very good, well-developed relationships with the principal characters and give enough character to all of them to make you feel for them and want to emote and really feel with what their plight is going through. Okay, Is it rare that that happens in these comic book movies? Yes, it is. But to say that there is no relationships and that there is no none of that at all through any of these films, they act 
like a certain like they like like they're in college and that these relationships don't matter is incredibly short sighted and goes to show that either A, he has not watched all these movies, or B, he goes into these movies, watch them already knowing what he wants to get out of it, or what he thinks. And he's just using it to enforce those opinions. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is James Cameron. <laughs> okay? Yes, I get James Cameron vision vision wise, like visuals, is a incredible director. He does outstanding imagery in his movies. Uh, Avatar, Titanic, Terminator 2, The Abyss, Aliens. Yes, okay. He is a fantastic visual director. He can't write for shit. He can't. He is a terrible writer. I don't care if you love these movies or not. And I know there are people who love Avatar and love Titanic. I get it, okay? But dear God, the characters that he writes are so paper thin that anybody could write them at a, at a, with a, a basic knowledge of screenwriting. I'm sorry, but it's true. His best movie, in my opinion, is Terminator 2. The writing in that is okay, but it's also unimportant. It is so unimportant. His other movies like Titanic and Avatar, good God, I, I do not get the love that Avatar gets sometimes. Before the sequel had a trailer this past year, no one talked about Avatar. Everyone was like, yeah, that was kind of weird that it got so much money. It really wasn't that good. Why was it? How did this get so popular? Yeah, it was beautiful. That was like Pocahontas. It was like, there was nothing. I don't even know the character's name. I still don't know the character's name. I don't know any of the characters' name. I barely remember the plot. Like, there's nothing in Avatar specifically that screams great writing. Same for Titanic. Titanic is a standard disaster movie that has really good actors, really good actors, doing eh, dialogue in a okay story with fantastic visual effects. That's James Cameron. For him to say that these relationships have no meaning or they, they don't have relationships or they don't have power or purpose or love or whatever is a fucking joke. Now, Scorsese can say that. And Scorsese can be like, yeah, it has these problems. It's like, okay, well, you're Scorsese. You not only do visually great movies, but you also have very well-written movies, and you do them very well. You deserve that. You have, you get a pass. I don't agree with him, but you get a pass. Okay? Fine. Cameron, on the other hand? Come on, guys. Cameron, like I said, visually is a fantastic director. It's time to get real here. And I think this is going to bear out when Avatar 2 comes out, Avatar The Way of Water comes out this year. The public is going to start realizing that his movies are just not written well. And the only thing that you get out of the characters in those movies is basically the, the feelings that you put into it. And that's it. Like, really describe the character of Jack in... Titanic or Rose, you can probably do it in a sentence, maybe a few words, if that. The villain of the movie of Titanic, I forgot his name, but Billy Zane played him, okay? He's as stereotypical as he comes. I mean, these are not in-depth characters that he writes, and for him to turn around and go, oh, this writing is not that good, bro, look at the movies you make. You're, you're no hot shakes either, my friend. But hey, you make all the money, you get all the fans, you, you got the you made the most money out of any director, fine. That's that's fine. But you can't sit here and say that you know what's best when it comes to great screenwriting, because that's your one fatal weakness. You're just not a good screenwriter at all. I would love to see someone write his movies and him direct it and see how that goes. Kind of like an opposite Kevin Smith. I would want Kevin Smith to write a movie and let somebody else direct it. That would be my wish for Kevin Smith. 
I'm the opposite with James Cameron. I wish James Cameron would direct a movie that someone else has written. But James Cameron has all the power and the money. He's going to make his movies his way. And eventually, people are going to realize that they're just not that well written. But we'll see when that happens.